Hello, and welcome to the presentation of the full year results for DX Group PLC for the year to 30 June 2019. I'm Ron Series, Chairman of DX Group PLC. DX is a well-established provider of a wide range of delivery services to both business and residential addresses across the UK and Ireland. We have approximately 3,500 employees, 74 depots and service centres across the UK and Ireland, with 110 million items delivered each year. DX was established in 75, taken private in 2006, with some acquisition-led expansions along the way. In 2014, IPO was made on the AIM market, uh, and there followed a period of difficulty for the company, leading to the investors mandating a change of the board in October 2017, at which point we, the new management team, took control of the business. In 2018, we announced the turnaround plans with the interim results in March of that year and strengthened the balance sheet, the cancellation of the loan notes and replacement of these with new equity issuance. This chart below which shows the movement in the share price over this period. And now to introduce our executive team. I'm Ron Series, chairman of the company. I was appointed to this role in October 2017. All of the board, including myself, are highly experienced in business turnaround situations. And indeed, I was chairman of Tuffles Parcels Express during the period of 2002 to 2005, when I worked with Lloyd to effect that turnaround. Lloyd was appointed as CEO in October 2017, and he has significant experience in the freight and parcels industry and was instrumental in the successful turnaround of Tuffles Parcels Express. Uh, Lloyd was also a founder member of Night Freight PLC, which was acquired by DX in 2012 and is the basis for the current freight division at DX. David was appointed as CFO in April 2018. He has many years experience in senior financial roles in the listed company environment and has a background in restructuring and turnaround activities as well. DX is structured in two divisions, DX Express shown on the left-hand side and DX Freight on the right-hand side. DX Exchange was the origins of this business, which provided a private member's B2B mail and parcel delivery network. Subsequently, the company has developed product in the secure market and added to that a regular next day fully tracked DX courier business. We also have DX Mail, which is a low cost mail provider. Our freight business is separated into the following. DX One Man, which is our major part of our business, It is a next day business to business delivery service specializing in awkward freight, the sort of stuff that finds it difficult to go through automated sortation machinery and which requires quite a deal of uh, human handling. That business had been losing money when we took it on and Lloyd will explain later on the significant amount of work that's gone into DX One Man over the past 23 months or so to get that business back towards sustainable profitability. Our DX two-man product, which is predominantly a home delivery service for large items up to 150 kgs, has shown good growth since we had it. DX Logistics is our comprehensive logistics solution, which provides an enormous area of potential growth for us in the future. In summary then, we've made substantial progress in the first full year of our turnaround. In the financial progress, we've returned to positive EBITDA, we've made substantial improvement in operating cash flow, and we have no exceptional items to report this year. Under strategic progress, we've made significant reorganizations of the business, as Lloyd will talk to later, passing responsibility and authority out to our general and regional managers. We've invested in sales and commercial teams in both divisions, which are delivering strong new business for us. In our outlook, we have a significant investment program commenced, showing the confidence that we have for the future of our business. And I believe we've laid the firm foundation for the next stage of our turnaround. Hello, I'm Lloyd Dunn. I'm the Chief Executive for DX Group. I joined the business, as Ron said, in October 2017, so I'm almost coming up to my second anniversary. I'm going to start, if I may, with the freight division. And as Ron explained, the freight division breaks into three, the one-man, logistics, and two-man. When we joined DX, the freight division was losing overall £20 million of which 25 million was the one-man section of the business. So therefore, the logistics and the two-man business was profitable. Now, subsequently, 
we've reduced the one man losses from 25 million to a run rate of around seven and the logistics and two man has grown so moving forward into this year we expect the division as a whole to move from a 20 million loss to break even and by this time next year we're hoping to be able to announce that the freight business will be in profit the two man business delivers bulky goods to private addresses and a number of contracts within the one man division are really more suited to two man so as we're growing we're migrating some of those contracts over to the two man home delivery business which in effect is actually more profitable and offers the customer a better service in turn this helps us with capacity issues in the one man business where we are currently growing at a rate of 16% We've reduced our losses in several ways. We've concentrated very hard on customer services, reducing the business to consumer delivery so that when we walked in, it was 50% of the deliveries were going to private addresses on seven and a half ton vehicles, which is not really suitable. And we've reduced that currently to a run rate of 27%. And that is reducing all the time with the sales growth in one man coupled with the migration of the private address business to the two-man business. We've increased driver productivity. We've recruited better drivers. We've paid them better. And we are getting an increase in the number of deliveries they do to each address. So clearly that's helped us with the costs. And we've also migrated a number of vehicles from 3,500 weight vans to seven tonners, which gives us more choice. To support the network, we've reopened two depots that were mothballed, one in Cannock and one in a place called Puckle Church, which is near Bristol. We opened Maidstone earlier this year, and we will be opening Ipswich in January. To help us improve our profitability, we've also invested in mechanisation, and two of our five hubs have got mechanisation. Now, you might think, what they're doing with mechanisation when we're dealing with ugly, bulky traffic. But there is an awful lot of traffic which is belt conveyable. And this both improves productivity and gives us better capacity for loading the vehicles. The express division is broken down really into two parts. The document exchange, which is what DX was founded on and where it's come to prominence, and the courier and secure business, which is de facto going into the general parcel delivery market, which does specialize in doing private address deliveries, unlike the freight business, because we're using smaller vehicles. Now, the document exchange has been in decline for a number of years. One, because the demand for the service has declined with the advent of digitalization. And secondly, the service was cheapened in recent years and customers voted with their feet. I took a look at the document exchange in Ireland, and whilst the technology is not quite as advanced as we are in the UK, the head of the document exchange in Ireland decided to help me and come over to the UK and have a look at what we were doing. That man has done a fabulous job, and in 16 months, he has restructured the exchange division. He has improved the quality of the service and the attrition rates have slowed from 13% to 10% and in the last financial year to June to 5%, which we're currently holding. Now, in addition to that, we've looked at how we can supplement the decline in the exchange income and we've surveyed a number of our existing customers who have given us positive feedback that we could in fact carry some of their mail, which currently goes with competitors. And we, at the moment, are currently recruiting salespeople both in London and in Manchester to address that situation. The rest of the business is made up of courier and secure. And within the courier and secure business, we recruited a complete sales force in the summer of 2018, which is now beginning to bear fruit. So initially we had five or six salespeople, we've now got 32 with a sales structure. Sadly, the HMPO contract was not renewed and DX held this for 14 years. This will end in January 2020. 
but this has been factored into our forecast, which remains unaltered. We're concentrating hard in Express on improving our customer services effort as we are in freight. So again, we're using localized customer services at each depot and some of the locations in Express that were merely delivery depots are now collection depots as well as we've invested in salespeople, notably at places like Bridge End, Shrewsbury and Grimsby. We have invested significantly in the legacy systems of DX and we continue to do so. This will give us, for example, weekly invoicing, visibility of our sales revenue quicker. And in addition to that, we are working on probably the biggest project that we've done in many, many years, which is what we call the ETA offering. Now, this is where our competitors steal the march on us in that they can offer their customers a two-hour delivery window with in-flight changes. So, for example, a customer can change their mind as to where they want it delivered or defer it. We'll be able to do that shortly. We're currently piloting our service and we hope to have it ready before Christmas to roll out to the 40-odd depots within the Express Empire. Now, this will give us a huge edge because whilst it's the same as our competitors, DX is relatively unknown in the parcel sector and therefore many customers see us as something completely new and with a sales force of over 30 compared to the five or six that we had 14, 15 months ago, we're a lot more powerful now in the market and we are getting around a lot of customers wearing out a lot of shoe leather. There is a very strong pipeline of opportunities currently and with the ETA service being delivered this side of Christmas and rolled out in the new year, we feel very confident that we will continue to grow the revenue in the Express division. My name is David Mulligan. I'm DX's Chief Financial Officer, and I'd now like to take you through the financial highlights of the results for last year. Revenue was up by 8% to 323 million, with revenue balanced evenly between the two divisions. The growth in revenue was driven by strong growth at DX Freight, and DX Express revenue grew slightly. Strong growth at courier revenue offsetting the declining revenue from DX Exchange. Pleasingly, the company returned to positive EBITDA with 3.3 million, compared with a loss in the previous year of 4.9 million. This resulted from an almost halving of the losses at DX Freight and a significant reduction in central overheads, offsetting a fall in EBITDA at DX Express. There were no exceptional items reported in the year, so no further accounting surprises to add to the 5.7 million of exceptionals reported in 2017-18. Net debt at 1.3 million was better than expected and a small increase over the prior year. The EBITDA drove the strong operating cash performance of 3.2 million compared to the outflow in the previous year of some 12 million. The key points to highlight on the income statement are the lower finance costs following the debt to equity refinancing in May 2018. The tax charge largely relates to tax due on the group's Irish operations and depreciation and amortisation fell year on year following the significant write down of assets in the previous year. On the segmental analysis, DX Express's EBITDA fell from 29.3 million to just under 27 million due to falling revenue from DX Exchange. This was more than offset by the improved performance from DX Freight where losses reduced significantly from 14.2 million to under 8 million, driven by the growth of the one-man service. I expect DX Freight to make further improvements this year. Central overheads, which is the cost of the finance, personnel, IT and management services functions, fell significantly as every area of cost was challenged and as these teams were reshaped. I expect central overheads to rise as we invest in the IT team and software development over the next 12 months. The balance sheet is in a similar shape to the previous year. Trade and other payables have returned to more normal levels this year as the business has returned to business as usual, having removed some of the financial stresses that were evident in the business in the previous year. Deferred income has fallen from just under 19 million to 17.2 million, which reflects the fall in the DX exchange membership fees this year. Operating cash flow at 3.1 million 
shows a high conversion of EBITDA to cash, with only a small outflow of working capital as new business was secured on new improved terms and trade creditors normalised. The capex of 3.4 million was funded from existing resources. This is expected to rise in the current year to around 5 million as we continue to invest in the turnaround of the business and in particular in operational equipment, property and IT. I expect net debt to slightly increase this year, driven by a modest cash outflow from increased working capital as the business continues to grow. Overall, this improved financial position that we have now established means DX is in a much stronger place from the position inherited by the board two years ago. In summarising our presentation today, we are pleased to report that the first stage of our turnaround has been successfully delivered with a return to positive EBITDA. As we've heard from Lloyd and David, we've made significant progress in both the operational and the financial elements of the turnaround of this business. With further initiatives underway to drive operational improvement, investment programs of 10 million planned for the next couple of years, focusing on IT systems, operational equipment, new sites and improvements, it's obvious that we've got the confidence behind us now to continue to drive this business forward to increase the value to all of our shareholders. We as the executive management remain confident that we're well positioned to deliver further progress and to build the momentum to return this business to long-term sustainable profit for the benefit of all of our stakeholders, staff, suppliers, customers, and shareholders.